Hi everyone, and welcome to another A and B horror movies video. I'm Aaron. I am Ben. And today we are joined by a very special guest, Eva Hamilton. We're so happy that you could be on our video today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So, Eva, you wear multiple hats. I see that you are an actress, uh, a producer, and a director. Um, and we're very happy to have you here today to talk with us about your new horror short film called The Shed. We both watched it a few times, and it's so awesome. We can't wait to uh, talk about that with you today. But like always, um, we're going to talk about what we're drinking. So, Eva, since you are the guest, why don't you go first? Sure. I do not have an exciting drink. Um, sadly, I have a white claw, which is which is quite basic, but it tastes good and it's fitting for the afternoon. So, yeah. Excellent. And, and you know, I, I actually really like white claws. I may have yeah. some white claw in this tumbler. Um, but <laughs> it's ice water. Um, ben, do you want to go next? What are you drinking, man? Um, I'm drinking a, I forgot what it's called again, uh, Hop Liminal Message. I don't know this boy. You're going to ask me, aren't you? No, I can't. <laughs> Oh, very cool. It is cool art. And you're going to ask me what percentage it is, isn't you? And I don't know that either. Well, we can always come back to it. Yeah. Oh, 5.3. <laughs> 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 Not too bad. Um, <laughs> let's see. I've got a Vanished Valley Brewing Company IPA, and it's called Watershed. I thought it was uh, appropriate for the uh, the video today. These guys are located in Ludlow, Massachusetts, and this is 6.7% alcohol. Oh, so we'll see. So, Ben, you might have to finish this video. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. And I'm using the Ash Geeky Tiki. Seemed uh, appropriate um, for the film we are going to talk about today. Um, so why don't we get right into it? Ben, do you want to start with the first question? We'll, we'll kick it off. Yeah, um, well, this was uh, just a question, not about the shed, but um, was there a particular movie or um, movies or anything like that that first got you into acting, interested, or? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's a particular movie that got me into acting. There was a lot of movies that I really, really loved. Um, as a young person that I think helped. The one that comes to mind um, is uh, Welcome to the Dollhouse, which was Todd Solondz, an old Todd Solondz movie. That was definitely super inspirational as far as acting goes, but um, no, I don't know if there's, I don't know if it was really about films or just, I just kind of got into it. And then I kept watching more and more films and I loved it more and more. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, Welcome to the Dollhouse. That's a great film. I haven't thought about thank that in years. You. Oh, I'm saying thank you. Like I made it. I'm, I'm, thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> it's a great um, choice. Look. Yes. <laughs> thank you. I feel like yeah, nobody else good. ever recognizes that. So nice. 90s, right? Late 90s, I think. Yeah, I think, think it was late 90s. 7, 98. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, well I, I do have a question about The Shed. So first of all, um, amazing film, like I mentioned, uh, co-stars Stacey Nelkin from Halloween 3. And I see that you were involved with the writing and directing as well. Um, how did you get involved with the project? How did that How did that come about? Yeah. Um, well, I so I mean I can't take all the credit as far as directing and writing. There, there's a test for sure. But basically, how it came about was I, I connected with some people that uh, the, people from multiple walks of life doing. Some are in film. Some are in totally different modalities. We have the therapist, all sorts of stuff. So um, mm -hmm. I connected with some people. Um, my main partner with Mooncats, uh, we became, you know, we kind of realized we were really on the same page as far as what we like in horror and really being into kind of an 80s aesthetic and having, you know, just similar taste in what we wanted to make. So we we were originally going to work on a feature that kind of fell through. And then we sort of started Mooncats officially. And we were like, let's, you know, let's do this short um, to start just to kind of show what we can do. Um, and Stacy became involved and you know, I knew I wanted to act in it. I didn't really know that I was going to end up producing uh, or, you know, being a part of the directing or writing, but it all just kind of came naturally. And we started a production company and yeah, we just, we shot it. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. How long did it take to, to shoot it? Was it a, a quick? It was very, yeah, it was quite fast. I mean, the, the, 
pre-production stuff took, took a long time, but as soon as we actually got it to shooting, um, and we had Stacy with us like on board from the very beginning. Um, so awesome. once we were all there in the same state, <laughs> I think we did it in about two weeks with some days off. So it was quite fast. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so you mentioned Moon Cats. I, I understand that you are um, part of that. Is that the production company you were referring to? And, and can yes, you say more exactly. about that? Yeah. Um, so basically, I started it with, uh, you know, a couple a couple of partners who are not like we don't they don't generally like join and talk and stuff as far as um, interviews or anything. But so I'm kind of the face of it for now. But there's, it's not just me. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we, um, we you know, we just really wanted to make stuff that that, that's what we wanted to make. And I mean, I act a lot of work a lot in horror, but it was just kind of nice to be able to have an opportunity to really put more um, of myself into it artistically and not just, you know, someone else's vision playing a part, but really be able to, to kind of, you know, make what I wanted to make. And so we just kind of all agreed that this was the first thing to do. And yeah, so we're gonna, we have stuff down the road. We're really excited. We will. Yeah. Ah, very cool. Um, I noticed on uh, IMDb that you have 14 new projects coming up, um, but, but we can talk about that in a moment. It sounds like you are, <laughs> you're very busy. Um, yeah. But uh, Ben, I'm just going to ask one question, then I'll let, let you go and yeah, I'll yeah. shut up, basically. Um, I definitely caught on to the 80s vibe, like the the, the synth music in the beginning. Um, the, I, I love the insertion of the Halloween 3 um, book at, at one point. That was really cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice touch. Um, and a couple of favorite moments. I, I guess one moment I really liked in the film, two two moments. Um, the, when you're talking to the pizza delivery guy and he says, you're like the fourth chick to call. That was so, fourth or third, I forget what number. Um, but that yeah, was an awesome it. moment. And then oh, the, okay. other, the other moment um, was when you're standing on the porch and you see the monster, I don't want to give anything away, run into the house behind you. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, I'm so glad you liked that. It's so funny because we we keep hearing people say like, oh, that moment actually got us. And the funny thing is when we were, you know, it's like when you see something so many times, you kind of start to lose track of like what's working, what's not. And so that was one of the moments that we were like, is this going to translate well? Are people going to find this scary? So I'm always really happy to hear that people liked that moment. It's it's very well nice. Go ahead, Ben. What do you, what do you have? Um, I love the whole, there was angles it was shot at and, uh, it was kind of waiting for something to happen because the angle that was shot, oh, is there going to be something behind? And the whole time, I mean, obviously you do get to see, uh, as Aaron said, monster in the end, but it it was waiting. And I thought what was a really good bit was, um, I think it was Night of the Living Dead on the TV. And where that, where that was playing, it started building more of the dread. And yet it, it oh yeah, it was really good. And, Along with that sound and the background and waiting something tight, it was really well. I enjoyed that part. And I, yeah, thank you. It was kind of a really Halloween feel I thought of waiting, sort of when you wait waiting for Michael Myers to come out of the. Yay! That's exactly. Yeah, what it was good. Yes. Oh, very much so. Even the beginning with like the flames and the music, uh, so Halloween, yeah. Halloween vibes. Yeah, we're totally Halloween like nerds, obviously. So that that was a big inspiration. It's kind of an homage in a way to John Carpenter. Yes. Yeah, oh, very cool. Um, ben, ben uh, do you have a, a question? Or do yeah. you want to jump I was just, um, if um, it it came around, uh, maybe it was asked, or maybe studio. Obviously, you've got your own um, the moon cut to make it into a full feature movie. Would you? Is that anything you thought about? Or yes, we would love to do that. Honestly, um, it's you know it's it's really expensive <laughs> filmmaking. So um, mm -hmm. as far as just getting that we just wanted to get this one out there like we knew we could make it and it wouldn't you know we can kind of use it as a calling card for what we can do so yes down the road ideally we really want to either do a feature next whether it's something different or we would totally be open to extending the shed I mean that would be I, I personally would love to do that into a feature yeah, I think you could go into the school with it yeah mm -hmm. so, and, it would be, dig, it would be, dig into the go ahead I'm sorry no no I was just gonna say it'd be great to do that I'd love to kind of dig into more of what's going on because there's a lot that we, you know, weren't able to really get into. But you did pack a lot, lot into the, the 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, I was just saying, was there was there a lot more sort of, obviously when it's being written, there's probably a lot more story there than that you could have put into it. And I mean, we wrote it to be 
in, you know, kind of an extended short length, but yeah. there were a lot of ideas that were thrown around that, you know, could definitely extend it. And there's stuff that I, I would love to have in there, you know, and I think it could easily be a feature because there's even just, you know, talking to my partners, there's a lot of elements of stuff that we see now watching the short that we're like, oh God, that would be so cool to be able to kind of like draw that out and add this oh, and yes. add that. And I think it could easily be a short. And also, you know, we worked on the, the script and development of two features before this happened, which are not even related. Um, and then it was, you know, it was just really expensive. And we thought, you know, okay, we're going to make a short just for now as a first time com company to just show people what we can do. So definitely a feature will be, will be coming at some point. Hopefully the shed, maybe something else. I don't Very know. cool. But it was really good anyway. We looked at it in Yes, we sure did. Um, and, and, you know, there was a, like I said, there was a lot packed into the 20 minutes. Um, I liked sort of the duality of the two mothers and how they handle being a, a parent. Um, your character sort of hits, seemingly has seemingly has hit rock bottom um, and takes this job. Um, and then you have Stacey Nelkin's character who is protecting her child as well. But what was interesting, I am getting to a question. What was interesting is that, so Whitney is sort of, um, that's her name, right? Whitney, I think it's Whitney, um, has hit rock bottom um, and then is presented with this awful situation where it's sort of a, you know, fight to survive and she actually steps up. Um, so I guess my question is, what was it like channeling sort of um, that character and becoming that that character? Um, well, you know, I, I always draw a lot from real life experience and just as far as an emotional element. Um, I don't have kids. I, I have some cats. <laughs> So there's a part of me that's like, whenever I always kind of draw from what I know. So there's like, I remember I, I was talking to one of the other <laughs> cats and I was like in that scene in bed when I'm really sad after kind of meeting with the John and mm -hmm. um, I was telling him, I was like, I was totally picturing, you know, one of my cats, like, like, what if I had to provide for her? And I couldn't, um, anyway, that's someone took your cat away. Thing. Yes. I could yeah, see. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but, but no, it was, it was definitely kind of a challenge as far as, uh, as far as getting into that headspace. And like you said, you know, there's this desperation that Whitney has, as well as Stacey Nelkin's character, Barbara, all related to their child. And that mm -hmm. is, you know, something that was kind of new to me to really, to, to really get into that headspace, but it was, it was fun and I love challenging roles. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you, you nailed it. You did an awesome job. I really appreciate it. What about you, Ben, you got one more? Yeah, um, so I don't want to steal something you're going to ask. Oh, it's um, cool, man. I could just keep talking. But... I always ask this when you <laughs> uh, watch parties and stuff. Um, is there a role or maybe not so much a role, but a, a franchise, if you was given the chance to um, be in it, what would it be? Or like what final girl would you be? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, my first answer is always Halloween. I love Halloween, so there's that. Um, I would love to be a part of Scream um, or the, the Friday the 13th franchise. I always love that. I, I know they have a new series coming out. I was talking to somebody in another interview about that. So that would be super yes. cool. Yes, they're not, it's a I prequel, like, I heard. Yeah, yeah, sorry, that's what it was. Yeah, it's a prequel. But yeah, that would be amazing. I think they're calling it Crystal Lake. Um, I think you're right. That's exactly what how could they do a prequel is it going to be the mother that's you know that's what i was wondering because somebody on i think on instagram had posted like i'd love to see eva play mrs Voorhees, and i was like wait what and then i was like god that'd be a cool role i that love playing really different cool. people and i was like yeah. if they're going back and it's her younger i would love that that would be cool right i mean she obviously got really mad at the counselors imagine like kids who picked on <laughs> jason yeah <laughs> I guess it could be fun. <laughs> My sweet Jason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I, it's sort of a, a general question I have. What what would you say was the most the most challenging part of working on this film? Um, and what was your favorite part? So sort of a, a double question. Um, yeah, the uh, I think the most challenging part was all the outside stuff at night um, because we were running out of 
nighttime. <laughs> the sun. <laughs> yeah it was like we're literally battling with the sun so there was I mean I remember the last couple hours of that were rough like we needed to get a lot we had long long shoot days um and we had a lot Mm -hmm. to get in so that was difficult and also it was I mean there was the element of it needing to be night but there was also just a lot of action and sometimes you know the things we'd sort of blocked out and planned didn't work exactly like we needed them to and you know once you realize that then it's like you're having to run around and try to fix everything and make it work so that against dealing with time was really tough um we made it work I'm really happy with it but that was a challenge for sure um and my favorite part you know I don't know about my favorite part filming it because I really loved it all for different reasons. But my favorite part, like when I look back on it, when I watch it, is the scene with, I don't want to give anything away, but the monster and the sink. I love that moment where like I'm kind of, there's my eye looking through the door. And I remember shooting that being so cool. And then like, you know, me seeing the monster in that moment. Was, yes. I love the way that it turned out. Oh, that view. Yes, that that is that scene, right? When you see the, yes. I don't want to give anything away either. Yeah, I know it's hard to talk about. <laughs> I'll leave it there. Um, ben, over to you. You got a question? Um, yeah, I have got some written down. Sorry. Um, so no, <laughs> lost them all. Um, <laughs> well, I have an easy okay. one. What's your favorite horror movie? Okay, um, of all time, all time. probably Suspiria, the original Suspiria. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you think of the remake? You know, I didn't watch it. I, I haven't either. I own it. But... Good. It's not just. I mean, it's, I like, watched the remake. it's so long. I was like, that's such a commitment. It is a commitment. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I love the original so much. I just, I don't know. It, it might be good too. I just haven't been able to bring myself to. Yeah. Sit down yeah. It, eventually, right? Right. Like I said, I own it. So at some yeah. point, I, yeah. Halloween for me, all the way, I always pick. The first oh one. love them. that's classic always well i can't say it's not always more classic but it is a good classic yeah and what's your pick um, ben i know what it is but i'm waiting for you to say it well, jaws always <laughs> oh okay that's cool um yeah uh <laughs> bit of a geek that one <laughs> um sharks what's your feeling on sharks i don't know i've no i, I don't mind them you swim in the I think, ocean. Um, back in the day, where it, it was less known back in the day. So I suppose if you were, it was back in the seventies, and you you didn't, the ocean was a lot more or less known about. It, I could see how that was quite scary and. Yeah. But yeah, it's just no, it's just my favorite film. Um, it's an incredible big, film. Yeah. Big Spielberg fan, so. Um, but uh, I have got a question actually. <laughs> um, is there any new movies um, you're looking forward? To watch an upcoming movie, sorry. Oh, like stuff that's coming out? Um, yeah. I'm trying to think what's I I have I'm very forgetful and I always can't think of things <laughs> on the um I don't know. Gosh, yeah. what's coming out? The new scream, maybe? Scream six? Right, there's a new scream. I didn't love the last scream, to be honest, but yeah, it was um, okay. Did you watch was- um Halloween ends? I did. Did you like it? No, I did not. (laughs) We're on our own, man, aren't we? (laughs) I think, yeah, we did a a video and we talked about how we like it, but... Wait, what did you guys think? I thought it was good. Um, I liked the way that it went a different way because I was saying to Aaron, if you use something Mm -hmm. over and over again, it kind of like, oh, I've seen this now, Um, which uh, I don't know if you watched our videos, I've like, the Jeep is the new Jeep is Creep has come out, and I am that is the worst film I've seen in such a long time. We don't ever like to talk bad of movies, but sure, I get it. Um, but yeah, no, if, if you watch that, all right, you're on the love for Halloween, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I didn't like hate it, I just didn't. I just, I mean, I know some people were like violently angry about it, I, I wasn't, and I just, still, yeah. I just wanted it to be more. Yeah, kind of my, maybe the character, I don't want to give too much away because if nobody's seen it, but there's a character could have maybe had more of a story maybe in the kills film. Early, earlier films, yeah. Yeah. Corey. Wait, Halloween you're talking about? 
Yeah. Um, oh. The, 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 the introduction of the Corey okay. character. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I liked that they took risks and tried something different. Um, I hear that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did watch it a second time. It did took me that second time to see it to to appreciate it. So. I probably should do that. I, I finally saw it recently for the first time, but I should probably watch it again. And I think the physical copy has extended scenes and deleted oh. scenes. So it might, yeah. it, I don't know. I mean, uh, the Halloween Kills extended cut worked better for me than the theatrical cut. Oh. It was a little well, bit more cohesive. I don't know if you've seen the extended cut of that one. No, I haven't seen the extended. Uh, it sort of ties it all together yeah. better. Um, we digress. That's that's one thing we do on our videos is quite a lot is start yeah. talking about other things. <laughs> that's okay. I that's <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it works. <laughs> um, Did you enjoy the two before that? The the 2018 and the kills was 2021 or 2020? I think it was 20, or was yeah. it? Yeah. I don't remember. Um, yeah. No, I did. I I, I didn't. I. I don't know. I mean, it's always difficult for me when they're remaking something that I like care about so much. That's it's yeah. just I feel like I can never get fully on board, even when I want to. It's very rare that like you know something that comes out later I, I'm really into as much as the as the original. But no, I I, I did I didn't dislike the other two. I um I think that part of the issue with with this final one is that because it's supposed to be the end. I mean, there was just it's impossible to make everybody happy with if it's the end because there's so many everybody yeah. wants things and you know you can't tell. yes definitely one of the biggest things i've ever seen with that is um i don't know if you watched the the game of thrones i am probably the only person on earth that didn't watch it everybody went <laughs> mad about the ending i was like the finale yeah i don't i, I didn't even know how you could have made it any different anyway because yeah i was it, fine with it. it wrapped everything up it just sort of said yeah it was a, the yeah. finale where they had the starbucks cup Yes. I think so. Yeah. Someone, yeah, someone left it on the the table. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it was a good cup yeah, of they coffee. Did, yeah, on the, the bottle of water. I have a I have a, a question for you. It doesn't really have to do with the shed at all. Um, but looking at Ben's background, Ben and I are both uh, fans of physical media. Um, what are your thoughts on physical media and buying, you know, DVDs, Blu-rays, box sets? Um, what is your? Oh, I mean. I think it's amazing to do. I don't um I don't have as much as I used to, I guess. I personally I'm one of those people that like I deeply miss physical media and I know it still exists. So it's kind of weird to say that, but I miss going to Blockbuster mm. or like Tower Records or whatever and picking up things and looking at them yeah. and um I and going really home miss that. So and, I, yeah. Yeah exactly and especially for me like music was I had an insanely huge collection of CDs which I still do they're just in my parents garage now but um but I was like the last person to get on board with streaming music and movies and everything mm -hmm. and uh yeah no, I think owning them's amazing I I don't have the space to have everything I would like to have but no I think it's awesome when people do I have a lot of friends that have crazy collections and clearly you guys do as well <laughs> yes yes we are fans yes but streaming music is funny remember the old CD booklets we'd go on road trips yes bring oh, the big yeah. cases <laughs> i miss that i yeah it's fun yeah it's because so um we've just had like uh over in the uk we've got hmv sort of mm -hmm. is the last sort of type of shop where you can do go and browse and and uh you can go i oh know you can get everything online but it, it's just something about going into to the shop, looking through the cases. Like I said, I'm, a, I'm an absolute massive music fan as well. And just to go and look through and browse, it's, yeah, it's... it's yeah, it's I mean, the hunt good, is so much of what's... That's so much that's of it. Fun and about it. Yeah. Discover new, new artists. And I mean, I remember like when you had the listening stations that you could go and like listen to whatever album and, you know. Yes, in the record stores, right? Oh, I just dated myself. I, um, yeah. I know, same. I'm like, <laughs> I, I even call it. I even say that now when we go to like HMV, I'm like going to the record shop. I can say it now because it's VA. Um, mm -hmm. no, yes, vinyl's right. come back, but I used to say it anyway when vinyl was like nobody had them. I always used to say the record store. Mm. Okay, good. Now, I don't feel as bad then. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Eva, I actually have a viewer question for you. Um, one of our viewers is a huge fan of the mutilator. Um, and so I told him that we were going to be talking to you. And I know that you are in the mutilator two coming up soon. So I'm going to just read this to you. It's from uh, Fake Voorhees. He says, I'm a huge fan of The Mutilator and part two is my most anticipated upcoming movie. Are you a fan of the first movie? And how did you get involved with the sequel? Oh wait, and can, of... you, can you tell us anything about when it's coming out? Oh, um, okay. So I, I do not know when it's coming out, um, unfortunately, okay. but I will obviously let everybody know as soon as I do. Um, I, I did like the original. Yes, I loved the original. I didn't see it until, uh, I don't know, a few years ago, surprisingly, somehow I missed that one. Um, yes, I liked it very much. I love kind of campy 80s craziness. And so that very much hit the mark for me. And I, I love Buddy Cooper, um, who's the director and who also directed the second. He's amazing. I'm so happy that I got to work with him and that he's the one doing this. And um, as for how I got involved, um, I I think I had seen something about that they were doing a sequel and... I, I don't remember where, honestly, I, I remember I, I told my agent and I um, had reached out to Buddy and just said, hey, like, I, I saw you're doing this. Like, that's that's amazing. If you need if you're not finished casting, I'd be really interested. And he kind of just got back to me and was like, hang on, let me like, you're definitely right for a role. And let me look at this and I'll get back to you. And he did. And he that's offered awesome. me the role. And um, yeah, it was it was amazing. I'm really looking forward to that. Very cool. Yeah, that's exciting. Hopefully it's coming out. Soon. Oh, yeah. Gotta be awesome because the mute light is like known quite big in like the horror community and just in movies like general that people yeah. talk yeah. about. Yeah, sure. That's the fall break one, right? The fall break yeah. song in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> and doesn't the doesn't the title say fall break and not yeah, so originally that was the title, and then I, I guess they changed it. I don't know exactly why. I think they just decided it needed something more horror -y from what I know. Yeah, the mutilator is definitely a small break. Up. It'd be like fun, like buddy comedy, I guess. Right, right. And like a, a rom com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, this has been awesome. I do want to plug a couple uh, other things for you. Ruin Me, um, excellent film. A Shutter original. It's streaming on Shutter still. Actually watched it about a year ago. Um, quite a fun sort of. I don't know how would you describe it. Sort of a slasher camp out escape room. Yeah, kind of has a little bit of like a meta horror scream vibe, and it's mm -hmm. about yeah a, a slasher camp out type thing. Slasher camp out. It's really good. Um, like I said, it's on Shutter. If you're watching and you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, and you also have another movie coming out called Sawed Off. Um, I haven't watched it yet, but I did just order a DVD copy. Um, so I'm looking forward to check, checking that out. And then I guess lastly, can you tell us about any other upcoming projects that you're excited about? Um, sure. Um, I am... I, let's see, I have, I have, you know, I have a lot of things coming out. It's kind of funny. I'm in this like waiting zone where there's a lot of films that I've shot that I'm like, okay, when's this happening? Um, But uh, there's a, a movie I did that's kind of an homage to like 80s vampire stuff it's called Appetite for Sin. Um, That's that's a cool one. Uh, I just saw it for the first time at the screening. Um, it has some really good, really cool people in it. Um, So there's that. Uh, I have... Um, something that's not horror at all called Quest for Love coming. That is the total opposite, but it's really well done. It's the kind of this romantic adventure comedy movie we shot in Costa Rica. That that one will be coming soon. Oh, I'm nice. Excited. Costa Rica. Cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's very exciting. I think when when some of these other projects do come out, we'd love to have you back on again for another video. We'll Thank you. Thank to talk you. about yeah. them. And then you could have a chance to pick a like a beer. Yeah, I picked a better <laughs> beer. beer. And, and like people have to go beer. like you guys both have lovely labels. So I'll I'll, I'll yes. do better. Oh, I'm just giving you a hard time. I love white cloth. No, it's true. <laughs> um well uh Ben, do you have any other questions? Or Eva, do you have any other questions for us? Um uh, yeah, actually we I think it was one of the videos we had before it was quite a cool question, just what we was all talking about. Um if there's an actor or actress that you could choose to sit and, and have a drink with and talk to, who would it be? Alive or dead? Yeah. Mm, okay. 
Um, That's a good one. That is a good one. Uh, there's different people that I would pick for different reasons, but as far as just acting, I think I would pick Greta Gerwig. I really, really love her. Like just artistically, I would love to talk to her from an acting perspective and filmmaking. Awesome. Um, then there's other people for horror. So yeah, that's, <laughs> I've got it narrowing things down to one, but I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> is horror your favorite genre? I love horror. Yeah, yes, good. Probably. That's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yes. I always love horror, total horror nerds, so yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I guess, lastly, how can people check out The Shed? Will that be released um, for those to watch? Uh, so, yeah, it will at some point, but as of now, it's on the festival circuit, um, so it's all over. So the, the only way to really watch it right at this moment is if you're at a festival. Um, okay. Pretty much. But we will. it will be released down the road. I don't know exactly in what form. We're talking to some potential uh, distributors, so that may be happening we don't know 100% what's going to happen, but it'll definitely be available. And I'll, I'll make sure to let people know. When it awesome. Is. And I hear it's doing really well at the festival. So that, yeah, that's it awesome. is. Really Congratulations. Happy. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for, for watching and for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. And when it does release, let us know and we will uh, mention it in a, a future video. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you very much for being here. Um, as always, if there's anything you'd like us to cover in a future video, add a comment and we will consider it. Yep, go to Instagram, follow us on there at AMV Horror Movies. Um, you probably do, that's why you're here. Um, hit the like and subscribe, helps our channel. And yeah, <laughs> that's it. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.